party with your host, Dustin Ripka. Hello and welcome to Sex Party. I'm your host, Dustin Ribka. Ladies and gentlemen, this week on the show with me, a real fucking legend of the sex industry, Susan Braddon, trusted hot sex advisor to millions, author. She's a G. She is the real deal, and I'm honored to have her on Sex Party. Susan and I talk about how to fuck your partner better, how to get fucked by your partner better, how to calm each other nonstop, as she likes to say, how good sex can make your life longer, how it's anti-aging, how the couple that fucks better stays together longer. Susan has real answers to real problems. This episode is probably the most value-driven thing that I have ever done, punch for punch. At the end of the episode, Susan and I chat about her starting an OnlyFans at 61. I cannot wait for you guys to experience this episode. It was amazing recording this. So without further ado, this is my conversation with Susan Bratton. This week's conversation. conversation. Susan Bratton, welcome to Sex Party. How are you? I love a sex party, Dustin. <laughs> I am so good today. Thank you for having me. And I can't wait to get into lots of juicy details with you. You know, you're my favorite kind of podcaster. You like a throwdown. <laughs> so, uh, yay, let's get it. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm super happy to have you, right? Uh, I'm incredibly picky about who I have in the show. It's only quality Aww. guests. But like with you, right, <laughs> let's take it a step further. I feel... Uh, I feel incredibly honored to have you because I feel like this is your shit, right? This is your fucking industry. And like, not just one lane, you have so many lanes. Uh, You've been in this, in this field for a long time. I'm someone who's just sort of a a fucking drunken tourist in this, in this area, right? Whatever. (laughs) I have no experts. Just spend lots of money and we'll keep you. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Right. So I'm I'm wondering for for the people who are meeting you for the first time, Who are you and what do you do? Okay. So I am Susan Bratton. I am trusted hot sex advisor to millions. I have written over 44 books and programs. I run a publishing company and I publish passionate lovemaking techniques. I basically turn how uh, how to have sex into how to make love for people. Um, If my type of, you know, like if my brand of sex, if it were a brand, it would be heart connected, passionate lovemaking. It would be super sexy, very sensual, very surrendered, very satisfying. Um, it would be just one of those kinds of sex dates where you're not worried about anything. You, you're hot for your partner. They're hot for you. You don't even know where it's going to go or what's going to end. What it's going to end up like. You're just feeling your way through together. You're co-creating bliss and pleasure. You're having orgasm after orgasm after orgasm together. You're basically fucking and sucking and holding and touching and kissing until you're exhausted or you have Mm -hmm. to go do something. And then you've got cum brain for an hour or two. That's what I really like. I like for people to have a lot of techniques I like them for them to have a lot of bedroom communication skills so that it's just this free flow of dirty talk and making requests and appreciation and adoration and all of those kinds of things. And the other, you talked about, I have many lanes, right? I've been doing this for a few decades. The other lane that I'm in is something called sexual biohacking, which basically biohacking means optimization. And what I really like to help people do is to have like super luscious genitals. I like nice, hard, veiny cocks that can last a lo- as long as we want them to. I like luscious, wet, dripping pussies that are just massively orgasmic at the slightest touch. I like that there's no pain, that there's all pleasure, that people feel young no matter what their age. I like to be with the people who are having the best sex of anybody they know and they know it. So that's just some example of the kinds of things that I think about and do. 
And I'm particularly oriented toward teaching people how to come well, long and hard, because I like people to understand that our bodies can come in over 20 different ways. And I want people to create new neural pathways to more intense and expanded pleasure together. So a lot of what I do is orgasm techniques, as well as just like fixing your genitals when they're broken or when they start to atrophy from age. So I'm a spokesperson for a company called Games Wave. And I teach a lot of people about Games Wave and Femi Wave because people are like, I didn't even know that was a thing. And I'm like, it's not only a thing, but it'll make your dick unbelievable. It'll make your pussy so nice. And then I am also a spokesperson for a penis pump and lady pump company. The pump is called the Whopper. And believe it or not, I'm like a queen of penis enlargement, which guys are like, is that a thing? Because one time I got a pump and like, it didn't do anything. And I said, well, you used a shitty Chinese novelty item instead of a decent tool and you didn't have the right protocol. But yeah, you can get 20% bigger in a year just using a pump. So I like to really just get right in there with what people want. They want to have great sex without any performance anxiety. They want to come really well together. They want to have incredible satisfaction and they want all their parts to be like, booyah. <laughs> God damn it. You are in the right fucking place. And like, I'm so <laughs> pumped to tear this shit up with you. Like that's what a fucking amazing intro. Right. Um, Good. so, so like, I want to like dive in in multiple different places. So we'll just jump around a little bit. Right. But like in the very yeah. beginning, you said uh, to go from having sex to making love. And I think, yeah. and, and, and maybe you agree, maybe you disagree. Who knows? I'm wrong sometimes, right? Whatever. But uh, um, I think people don't associate the two together. They're like, oh, to be in love and to be making, making love, that's not the same as like fucking and coming and cum brain and penis pump. Like they, they can't be together. So I guess my first basic ass question, right? Because someone's got to ask them. Um, how do you how do you marry those two and make it one lane right like making love with like fucking and coming on each other like how do you make that one thing well i almost kind of feel like that might be that madonna whore type of bifurcation where there are so many people who have been sexually shamed religiously repressed who've had no modeling for you know a couple that is having great sex and also loves appreciates and honors each other um they've had shitty sex they've had trauma they've had abuse they've you know whatever all that stuff and I think that when you really, really love a person and you, you know, I've been married to my husband for 31 years. That's awesome. And Congratulations. I love that man so much. I mean, he is the wind beneath my wings. He is my best friend. He is my business partner. He is the father of my child. And he is a hot lover. And he comes the shit out of me. And we try all different stuff. He's my muse. I'm like, babe, I need to stick this thing up your ass. Oh, okay. You know, like whatever. He, he's open to trying things and he's always encouraging me for more. And he's always calming me super well. And I totally love and adore him. So to me, they're not mutually exclusive at all. He allows me to be as slutty in the bedroom as I want to be. Not only allows, encourages it. He likes me to dress up in the sluttiest lingerie when we have sex because that's what he loves. He loves that visual. So I think that over time, because of his masculine sexual leadership, he's really led me to be completely comfortable in my sexual abandon and desire and that he can hold all of it no matter how wild and horny and hungry and lusty and how much I want to come. And he never shames me or shuts me down for any of that. And I think that's why, and, and I have other lovers and I've had many lovers over the years. We've had an open marriage for more than half of our marriage. Our daughter knows about it. Our daughter knows who our lovers are. So it's not like it's only with this one perfect guy. I mean, I can have, a first time experience with a new partner that's that they'll say to me, I've never had sex like this before. I've never, I've never had this. 
this is just, you made me feel so comfortable. This was so erotic. This was just incredible. And it's like, yeah, that's that's because I walk my talk. So (laughs) I believe that all people can have this. And that's what I like to do is I like to teach people these simple little things, little swing, little hinges that swing big doors. Try this thing. My sexual soulmate pack communication technique, my thrust in time fucking strategy, you know, whatever it might be. Try this little thing and tell me how it works. And for people generally, the reason why, you know, sex is such a vast landscape and you could be entering it at any location, right? And so my body of work is so large in, in, in part because I've just kept meeting people where they were and meeting people where they were and meeting people where they were and creating these tools for them because I'm not a therapist. I don't see people by the hour. I'm not, I don't do any one-on-one. I publish techniques that people purchase or get for free. I have a lot of free stuff. Like there's people who've been with me for over a decade who've never paid a dime for anything and they've learned so much. So I, you know, water seeks its own level on that and I do very well. So it's no big deal. But I think that, these are for sure learned skills. And um, I've just been studying them and trying to say, okay, now how could I explain that to you so you could have those same experiences with me? Uh, fucking amazing. Uh, you can't hear the audience, but they're applauding because they're, the fu- <laughs> they're in the future, right? Um, uh, but, but I think, you know, the thing that I, I keep butting up against on this show, which I love to fucking thrash and fight and mm-hmm. push – push down the stairs, right? Is this idea Mm -hmm. that you just meet your partner and everything's great, right? Like, Mm -hmm. uh, we both reach for the same vape pen at the same time and we're (laughs) together forever, right? Uh, whatever. And I think the issue with that is, is one of the amazing things you just said is that it's, it's learned skills for sex, for relationships. And I think, We just as a society, maybe it's the Disney movies, maybe it's the fucking rom-coms, whatever it is, Mm -hmm. church, yada, yada, uh, Mm -hmm. that says, oh, when you meet your partner, that's it. There's no more work. Mm -hmm. You should be in love. She's never going to look at the pool guy. You're never going to look at the secretary, Uh, uh, whatever. And that's just not true. So I'm wondering because everything you just said, I feel like I can feel them in the future listening to this. And they're really excited about what you just said, right? Especially Mm -hmm. the women, I feel, because they're thinking, okay, I'm in. How do we do this? So what you don't have to give your whole playbook away or whatever, but can you think of like two or three tips to like at the very beginning, you're kind of in a relationship, it's kind of rusty, you're Mm -hmm. scared, you want to change it or move on, uh, you'd rather stay, what do they do? Yeah. Well, there's two things. The very first thing is I I talked about the sexual soulmate pact just a second ago. And um, one of my books is called Sexual Soulmates, The Six Essentials to Connected Sex. And what I've done for the last two decades is answered people's, this was before you could even slide into a DM. (laughs) I answered people's email questions and, um, you know, people would grab me when I was out speaking at an event, say, hey, can I ask you a question? Like, of course you can. I have just answered everybody's questions oh every day for decades and that has given me a really good sense of where people get stuck what their limiting beliefs are and what they need to know and do and sexual soulmates the six essentials to connected sex the number one essential is being able to ask for what you want in the bedroom and being able to say that to your partner and not having your part, not being fearful that your partner is going to take it as failure or they're going to emotionally collapse or check out or be like, I, I know what I'm doing. You don't have to tell me things, which is like the worst response to a correction or a request in the bedroom. And people are just so afraid to talk to each other. So I think that the, the, the foundation of all good sex is two things, communication and relaxation. Because a lot of times... If you aren't sure what you want, but you know what you're having isn't it, you just keep your mouth shut. You're like, well, I'm just going to go with the flow because every time I, you know, like if he, if I say I don't like it and then he's like, well, what what, what do you want? And you're like, I don't know. And then he's like, well, God, you know, <laughs> it kind of goes off the rails. So the Sexual Soulmate Pact, which is at, it's free. I, I have it pulled out of the book and it's free. It's at Sexual Soulmate Pact, P-A-C-T, like an agreement, sexualsoulmatepact.com. Grab that because basically it's the short little PDF that teaches you how to overcome those issues, how to know what you want 
actually understand what you want by listening to your body. Your body is always talking to you. You have to tune into her or him. And then how to feel confident giving voice to the animal body that you live in and having your partner not only openly and warmly accept all of your communication, but love it, crave it, and use it to make your sex get super hot together. So I think that's probably the very first thing. And then the second thing is this understanding that most of us are in heterosexual relationships. And this works whether you are or you are not. Now, I have a huge gay man following. And I have many, many lesbians who love my work as well. So it doesn't really matter where you are on the gender spectrum. But let's just go with one of you has a dick and one of you has a pussy. Because that just makes it simple for the large majority of people on the bell curve who stay with me here. And that is that if you have a dick, you wake up every morning, if you're healthy, with a heart on. You had nighttime erections all through the night. You got a bath of testosterone, which makes you horny. You masturbate every day because you're biologically driven to want to jerk off and keep your sperm fresh for the moment that somebody wants you to fuck them. So then you can pass on your genes. So like you don't even have any control over that. You're just horny. You want to masturbate and you're always down to fuck. That's a healthy, that's a healthy man. And there ain't nothing wrong with that. We love that. Yay for you. It's fantastic. (laughs) A healthy woman She's on a 28-day cycle. She runs with the moon even after menopause. She is not masturbating every day typically, right? It doesn't even occur to her to do it because she doesn't have to keep the sperm topped off. And um, she loves sex. She wants sex. She'll actually go way longer than you will as a guy most of the time once you get her going. But getting her going is the hard part. There's some heavy lifting involved because when you say to her, do you want to have sex? She's like, uh no asshole. I I don't want to have sex. I'm fucking busy right now. I'm doing like a million things. There's all this shit going on in my mind. I'm pissed off at seven people. I'm just like, I had enough of everybody's bullshit, whatever. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's too big an ask for a woman. It, if she goes to you, Hey babe, do you want to fuck Dustin? Do you want to fuck? You're like, fuck yeah, I want to fuck. <laughs> right. <laughs> but if you ask her, she's like, no. Nah. But then when you finally get her to do it, she's like, how come we don't have more sex? (laughs) (laughs) Is this any of this sounding familiar to you? (laughs) I mean, I think, you know, this is fucking amazing. Like you are the original gangster of love, I think. I I was was thinking like, (laughs) wow, fuck. Because like the OG original gangster, like you've been in this game. You've seen these things. You've done all these things. I'm like – Nobody could say that the way that you said it, but even what you said, right? I think you just described so many people's yeah. uh, situations and obviously, mm-hmm. right? Um, and I and I just – I'm so fucking happy uh, not only that you're here, but that you are who you are. And <laughs> it, it just – it, it, it means a lot that you're here on Sex Party with me. And I think you said a lot there and, and, and I, I want to touch on what you just said, but also like – yeah. You said at conferences for years, you've been listening to people, right? And they're yeah. coming up. I got a question. I got a question. Da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. So that being said, you have listened to everyone's problems. Mm-hmm. Um, you're the perfect person to ask what, what is wrong with sex? Not only right now, but what is wrong with couples? What is wrong with uh single people, like sex in general? What are the issues mm-hmm. that you're seeing? Most people are having problems with and sub question has it mm-hmm. changed has it changed in the last 10 20 30 years well first of all sex has changed so much in the last 5 years in mm-hmm. the last 2 years um it's really rapidly accelerating and it's rapidly accelerating for a number of reasons um i i want to finish off on one i'm going to answer that question but i yeah. want to finish off on one more thing about that and that is that i stated the problem but not the solution and i never like to state a problem without a solution so what's the what's the solution for this almost you could many people call it mismatched libido but i don't actually think that's it because she's just as horny as he is she just needs a different approach to sex and that and and the approach that she needs is for her body to be calmed down and relaxed and to get turned on because she's not already horny and turned on like he is so what she needs is his help to get out of her head and into her body 
and begin to go up the arousal ladder. And he has to understand that he has practically has insta boner. Like if he's horny, he's probably already hard. And so he's, he's rushed sex so many times because he's ready to go and he doesn't understand that it takes her a good 20 minutes to get to the same level of arousal that he's at which he starts that my number one thing that I say is turn around and go back and get her and go way slower and stroke her whole body, her hair. I have this thing called the bullseye touch technique, which it's really just this idea that you want to work on the outside circles before you go into the creamy center. Like, a, like just the fact that a guy would grab a pussy and think that's a thing is the most ludicrous thing in the world. Because first of all, all of our stuff's up inside us. You got to get into the buried treasure, right? All our clit, our clit is as big as your dick. It, the thing that you see on the outside, that tip, that's just the tip, the glands. And yeah, I know it has 10,000 nerve endings, but all her clit, all her urethral sponge, which is called a G spot. It's not a spot. It's a long tube. All her perineal sponge wraps around her vagina. And it takes a while for the blood to seep in there where it t- it's super fast for a guy. He's got fast acting hemodynamics. It goes really in fast compared to her. It seeps in slowly. So he has to play with her, you know, stroke her hair, kiss her eyes, kiss her cheeks, kiss her neck, rub her feet, rub her back, grab her ass, play with her chest, touch her breasts, not grab her nipples and grab her clit. I mean, like, and then, or, or do what I call the sex type of sex, which is grab a boob and stick it in. Like that's (laughs) what makes her not want sex with you anymore. And when guys are, when guys come to me and they say, my, my wife's libido is gone. She doesn't have any libido. I think to myself, oh, she does. Because if that hot guy at the gym would fuck her, she'd fucking fuck him. She just doesn't have any libido for you. And it's very hard for guys to hear that. But one of the things that I think is really great about people is that when you tell them the truth and they know it's the truth, they're like, oh, fuck, that was painful. But thank you. You're right. Okay, what do I need to do? What did I, what did I do wrong? What do I need to do? So my wife is begging me for sex. And that's where I explain bullseye touch, romance her full body. Don't always touch her to get sex. Don't offer sex, make her ask for it by turning her on. There's all kinds of things you can do in the kind of romance and foreplay category that get her juices flowing. You got to get her juices flowing. When a woman comes to me and she's like, I'm so dry. I don't even want to have sex. Normally you think, oh, it's, it's hormones. It's not hormones. It's literally her blood flow and her arousal systems aren't being primed well. So this notion of turn around, slow down, come back and get us, get us in relaxed and in our body. And then we'll start to get turned on. Use some dirty talk. And by dirty talk, I don't mean, Hey, you dirty little slut, you're going to come for me. It's not that that's usually not helpful for women unless they're like super turned on. It's much more the like, you're so fucking hot. I love you so much. You you know, adoration, appreciation. Your boobs are so sexy. I want to get my hands on them. I love your ass so much. You look so good. I hope we get to do doggy style today because I just love to see my cock going in and out of your gorgeous pussy from behind. You know, like those kinds of things that are more of just heralding her beauty and sexiness that are like, oh, oh doggy style. Well, maybe I could, I don't know, you know, like she's just so far behind. So that, that's the point I wanted to make. And then how has sex changed? It's changed just a shit ton. Mm-hmm. And the way that it's changed has been like really interesting things. Like basically the nichification of porn has gotten all kinds of people into fetish. Um, dating apps. Now there's kind of this Persona, persona skills desire matrix is what I call it, which is basically like, okay, I am a, you know, a fruititarian. I'm, a, I'm like, a, <laughs> I'm a sapiosexual, bi curious, blah, 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 who, ha, who likes to give to get and I like kink and threesomes and I desire MFMs and I want to eat the come out of your pussy. 
Like what, you know, like it's those, you know, and that's like what people are writing on their dating profiles now. That's what people are writing on their dating profiles now. That shit didn't happen a couple, even a couple of years ago, except on maybe on Fet Life. But now, now they're starting to write that stuff. And there's a lot more apps out there for all those niches as well. So that's quite interesting that people are able to single people are able to begin identifying the kind of sex that they want to have so that they can find partners who are like-minded. Now, one of the interesting things about that, this is my like old lady wisdom, (laughs) is that the things that turn you on right now are great, but they're not because that was always, you don't have this set point where you're like, yeah, I'm just kinky. And all I want to do is have candle wax poured on me all day and be wrapped up in shibari ropes. You know, like Uh that's what you want to do right now. That's what sounds fun to you right now. But as you mature, you mature sexually, your sexual growth and your personal growth are two sides of the same coin. If you're one of those people who's like, I love to do the work. I'm trying to be a better person. I've got some goals for the year. I'm, you know, I'm thinking about making myself a better woman, a better man, a better person, whatever it is, then you're really a good candidate for continued maturation of your sexuality and continuing to stack your skills, grow your skills, grow your ability to have the 20 kinds of orgasms there are to, you know, be really good at oral, be really good at fucking. I mean, if there's some money left on the table right now in sex, it's about how poorly people actually have intercourse, how little they know about it, how they're still just going, that's, or like, it's like, bare bones, basic bitch shit people are doing in intercourse right now. And I'm trying to raise people's intercourse game because the number one thing that women want. So I have this, this new like little couple it's good for singles. It's good for couples. I got this new little thing. It's like a game. It's like an erotic play date. It's an, it's an adventure you take yourself on, or you go on with your partner that is called the sex life bucket list. It's at sexlifebucketlist.com. It's free. It's a PDF. You download it. It comes with a video of me in my sultriest, sexiest voice taking you through 48 different erotic play dates that might be of interest to you. You, If you're lucky enough to have a partner and you do this experience together with them, you can make out of the 48, you can put some on your A list. I definitely want this on my sex life bucket list, my B list. It's not for me. It's not something that would go on my bucket list, but if my partner wanted to do it, I would for sure do it with them. C is it's not for me right now. Never say never. The things that you used to look at and go, that's so freaky. You're now masturbating too. So never say never. And then you get your bucket list and you have all these fun ideas of things that aren't just do you want to have sex? Because do you want to have sex usually gets a no if you're asking your female body partner if the sex isn't that great. So the way to get her to be like, babe, do you want to have sex with me? Like <laughs> asking for it is doing erotic play dates. On Thursday, we're doing an erotic play date. We're going to try learning this thing. We're going to do this thing. We're going to have this fun. And that's what really gets couples playing together in the bedroom. The couples that play together stay together, especially in the bedroom. So sex life bucket list, I think, is one of those things that if you love sex, it's good to know the things you'd like to do next to increment your knowledge. Because there that's what's changed so much is that people have gone from the old in and out to trying lots of new things together. There's so many things you can do and people want to have those those erotic play dates. Yeah, I mean, again, incredible fucking answer, like full of of like wisdom and knowledge. Like, <laughs> again, uh, original so original gangster of love here, people. Like, you know, <laughs> like if you're if you haven't blown through like a whole uh, notepad in person or uh, on your phone, like, come on, right? We're only halfway through, or, or so. Who knows? <laughs> we might go forever. Who knows? Um, so a while uh, uh, earlier, I asked uh, what was wrong with sex right now, and it sounds like potentially the answer was. That that no one knows how to do uh, intercourse the way that that is really desired. Is, would you would you say that's true? Like the number one problem with sex right now is is that it's a miscommunication there. 
I think it's a big opportunity more than a problem. I think that a lot of people are like, yeah, I could, I could up my oral game. I could use a few more techniques there, but I don't often think people are like, oh, I could up my fucking techniques. I could use a little, <laughs> I think they think their fucking's good and their orals could get better. And I think they're, they're fucking and their oral are probably not equally shitty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just, I just know, I just know what it's like to have incredibly well-educated lovers who have a lot of experience and how much they can learn from how much you can learn from lovers who have an incredible amount of experience. And when you are educated sexually, when you have learned and you've tried a lot of things, when you have a really wide repertoire of techniques, when you understand how to come a body really well, when you're really easy to talk to in the bedroom, when you really have no body image issues, you're fun to fuck, you're having a great time. I mean, that's just so nice. And all of it is learned. We don't start out with it. Like we can figure out how to procreate pretty much on our own. Like, oh, look, try that dick in my pussy. Oh my God, I had a baby, right? I mean, that's pretty simple. But being a good lover is a lifetime of growth. It's an opportunity for a lifetime of growth. Growth. I have this thing I like to call when you are a lover to the point where sex just keeps, when you have the sexual mindset of growth, you end up being a person who is on what I call the upward pleasure spiral, where sex keeps getting better and better your whole life long because you become more skillful, more confident, more comfortable, more relaxed, more communicative, more ability to show your pleasure, which is like, it resonates with your lover. Like if, if we had sex, Dustin, you and I had sex, and I'm so easy to make come, and I'm coming like crazy, you're going to get way more turned on than you would with someone who isn't. And so the more you have the capacity to feel and express your pleasure, the more you're turning your partner on and they're getting off on that, and that's upping their pleasure. Okay, here comes a dumb question. Again, yes. someone's got to ask the dumb questions. No questions are dumb, but I'll ask it anyway, right? Um, couples that are doing what, what you're saying, right? And they're, mm -hmm. they're coming together. Uh, mm -hmm. They're setting aside uh, days of the week where they're going to explore new shit. They're going to fuck each other. They're going to come each other, all the things. Yeah. Are they just like – if there was a chart of people who weren't and people who were, the people who are, right – they're staying together longer than question mark, like by leaps and yeah. bounds. So like, yeah. what does that look like? Yeah. It's so, oh man, I just love it when people email me inside and in like in the last <laughs> 24 hours, I've had three different people, one woman and two men say to me, we got your whatever program book for it would it, some of them were free, some of them were paid, you know, whatever they were. <laughs> 30 romance tricks that work like magic, the sexual soulmate pact, uh, thrust in time. You know, they were all different things that they because I always say, well, what was it that that made you want to write to me and say how great your sex life is now? And I was like, find out what it was that they got. And um, they're like, we had really lackluster sex and all of a sudden just getting your materials, it lit a fire under us and we're having the best sex of our life. And I mean, that's what's coming in to my DMs and my emails. It's so rewarding. I love it so much. And it's really not only that the couples, people break up for sex or money, or they break up because the person has some you know, psychological, mental health issues or what have you. And it's un an unsustainable relationship, which is very sad, but mostly people break up because of sex or money. And when people have good sex, but money problems, they still s tend to stay together and work through the money problems. So <laughs> generally it's mostly like, well, you're broke and you don't come me. So I'm leaving, <laughs> you know, it's not, you're broken. I'm leaving. It's you're broken. You don't come me well, and I'm leaving. So one of the things that I have also really want to, that I really want people to understand is that when you have intimacy three times a week or more, 
you also look 10 years younger than everyone else your age. So it's very good for your longevity and your health to have a great sex life. So there's all these biohackers out there. I am one of them who are trying cold plunges and red light therapy, and they're shooting themselves up with BP 157 and they're, you know, whatever they've got their aura ring on. And I'm like, well, when's the last time you got fucked? You know, that's what I'm always thinking with people. It's like, (laughs) what did you eat? Did you work out today? And did you get laid? Because that's the shit that's going to keep you young. You want anti-aging and longevity. You want it. That's what you need. Good nutrition, good movement and fucking. That's it. And it doesn't have to be intercourse. But here's the thing. On that sex life bucket list, this isn't, I think you'll like this. On that sex life bucket list, when I, um, a lot of times I'll do that as a keynote speech. I do speaking from the stage whenever I can. I'm always looking for opportunities to speak from the stage because I love a live audience. And I, I, I will do the sex life bucket list and kind of take people through it and take them on that sexy, you know, experience. It's like a very interact. It's almost like a workshoppy fun kind of an experience to do. And um, at the end, when they come up and talk to me, I'm like, all right, so what were the, what was number one and what was number two? And interestingly enough, for a lot of people, when the women say the female body, they say number one for me was having orgasms from intercourse. I, I still haven't had them. And I hear that you say that all women can, it's a learnable skill. I thought I couldn't, I thought I was broken. I thought I was just that kind of person who couldn't. And now you're telling me I am, and I want to try, I want to cross the gasm chasm, close the orgasm gap. Number two is I want to experience female ejaculation. I want my G spot awakened and pleasured, and I want to squirk. For guys, they're so cute. This is so classic on guys too. I love them so much. They're like, well, number one on my list is all the shit on her list. <laughs> Fuck just, yeah. you, know, you guys are in service to our pleasure. You mm-hmm. want us to have incredible pleasure. That's your number one goal. You'll give up your pleasure for our pleasure. You really will. But uh, it's just so cute. So that's number one for them. Number two for them is um, that they want um, to become multi-orgasmic men and have ejaculatory choice so that they don't just come and ejaculate and sex is over. They want to keep on going. They want to have full body energy orgasms and then ejaculate when they want to or when she begs them to, number one. And number two, they're interested in P-spot orgasms, prostate orgasms or blended orgasms, pleasuring the prostate and manually or giving him a blowjob or fucking him you know, playing with his penis. So, um, that's what's on people's, that's what's highest on people's bucket list is actually pretty basic orgasm skills. That's still where people are and the things they want to learn now that they know they're learnable skills. Man, I just, uh, you know, it's crazy. And I want to say one thing first, because, yeah. You know, if, if, if there's any guy out there, uh, who's like, I don't care about her pleasure. I'm just trying to get off. Okay. First of all, you're trash. Second of all, you're a fucking yeah. idiot. Right. Yeah. Cause, cause we are, um, we have ego and shit as, as males. And, and part of our yeah. ego is like, I want to get my lover off. So she feels good, but also, so I feel good about myself. Right. It's a huge thing. So I want to get that on record because that 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 shit is like way worse than anything toxic. Like if you're with someone who's just banging you to get off for, for themselves, like they're out. They're fucking off the team. Okay. Yeah. Um, two, you know, before we dive into some of the specifics, mm-hmm. the thing that I keep coming across again on this show is what you just said. And I'm going to put a little finer point on it. It sounds like mm-hmm. the two biggest – uh, fucking things that you can do to have a better, not only sex life, more orgasms. Okay. Um, but also like stay together as a couple Mm -hmm. is honesty, like, like Mm -hmm. extreme straight to the point, honesty Mm -hmm. without an ego, uh, which is hard. And we all know that, but like, get over it. Let's do it. Right. And two, like actually setting aside the time, this idea of having check-ins and having, uh, fuck dates and all of that stuff. Play dates, erotic play mm-hmm. dates. I think that's a really good phrase for people to learn because when you stop having, when you stop thinking, okay, we're going to have sex, which is, feels like a chore to women. Mm-hmm. And instead we're going to learn some new pleasure skills. Let's have an erotic play date. Let's pick something off our bucket list and practice it and learn it together. You get new relationship energy. It's novelty, variety. That's what keeps desire high. 
Yeah, no, that's that's so incredible. And I hope that like I'm hammering it home with the show. Um uh the other thing now in the in the specific realm that you mentioned is the squirting thing. And we don't have yeah. to take a ton of time on it because cause whatever, because I feel like a lot of people do, and we come across it on the show all the time. But I, I want them to hear it from you, the original sure. the original gangster of love, right? Um <laughs> Is squirting real in a female? Yeah, uh, it's called female ejaculation or female ejaculatory orgasms. And um, just like guys can urinate and ejaculate out of their penis, that's the urethral canal, um, women can urinate and ejaculate out of our urethral canal. We have an innie, you have an Audi, but it's the same exact tube. It's where your pee comes out and your ejaculate comes out. Your ejaculate is mixed from your testicles, from the vesicles in your testicles and your prostate. And it mixes the semen from your testicles in with the fluid from your prostate that comes down in, it empties into that tube. And then you have an orgasmic contraction and you expel that fluid. Your ejaculation and your orgasm are separate systems. So that's how male multiple orgasm works. You can actually bring the orgasm up into your body rather than shoot it out your dick with your ejaculate. Then you can ejaculate when you want to. For women, we have that same system, the um, vagina and the urethral canal. Um, both pull fluid from the blood plasma. And it seeps in through our vagina, through the lining of our vagina, through that tissue and wets our vagina. And that's how we get lubricated. That's where the lubrication comes from. It's not a gland. It's not self-lubricating. It's actually recruiting from your blood. And that's the same as female ejaculation. It comes down into your pelvic bowl. It seeps through these little glands called your skein's glands, fills up that urethral canal. And when you have a contraction, it forces the fluid out of the same place your pee comes out. You could also have increased vaginal lubrication. And um, all women can ejaculate, all women can squirt. When you first learn how to do it, I have a program called Female Liquid Orgasm. It's at femaleliquidorgasm.com. There's some free reports on that site. You don't have to purchase the program. There are some free things, free assets as well. And essentially, it's primarily pleasuring the G area. But there are certain, stro you need a stroke portfolio and you need to really understand where to locate it. And what they show in porn is basically just one or two techniques that are very advanced. So you need to start with things that actually awaken and activate the squirting so that she can begin to feel the wetness. Then she feels it like a little wellspring of fluid. Then maybe there's a little trickle, then maybe there's like one little spurt. And then pretty soon she's soaking the bed and you've got to make sure you have a plastic bed protector or you've got a liberator fascinator down or something that's waterproof because she's going to let go of liters of fluid when she gets going. And she can make herself ejaculate with her hand or tools. And her lover can do it with their hands, their penis, with tools. Women can ejaculate from intercourse, from G-spot pleasuring, and from clitoral stimulation. So the more you know, the more you do it, the better you get, and the more pleasurable it becomes. For a lot of women, G-spot or squirting orgasms, if you will, are the most intensely pleasurable orgasm they've ever had because there's something really, really freeing for a woman about letting it all go, just letting it out. Like, hey, I'm going to soak this fucking bed with my juices and I am the boss bitch of my sex life and my pussy. Let's go. That's a really nice place for a woman to be especially to be encouraged to be that girl that lets it all go. 
Yeah, I mean, fuck, right? Like, who doesn't? What woman wouldn't want to? What person wouldn't want to be there, right? And like, the only, the only, only thing that I would add, right, is if there's gonna be squirting, just make sure that there's not a fan anywhere nearby. That would be my only. <laughs> that would be my only tip from personal experience. Did you have some blowback? We had, yeah, yeah. There was a ton of blowback, but then you know, even if the fan is off and you go to turn it on later, you're gonna have all sorts of fucking wetness again. So move the fan out of the way. Make sure it's uh, uh, in some other part of the room, right? You can still utilize it. I think that this is incredible, but it, it also goes back to something you said in the very beginning of this interview that uh, ever so nicely, right? Look at look at me being a, a professional podcaster. Um, the, the 20 different kinds of orgasms, right? Like, yeah. So there's 20 different kinds of orgasms for male and for female or how, yeah. do, how does that work? I mean, we don't have to list all of them, obviously, mm -hmm. but... I just think that most people listening to this or watching this, they're very smart people. I think they probably know of maybe five or six, right? But you saying there's 20, let's talk about this because this is fascinating. Sure. Well, I think just because I know we're coming to a close on the show, sure. we don't want to keep people forever. The, what I would do is I would say two simple things. The very first one is that we have the same parts arranged in different order. Just like I was talking to you about how we ejaculate, we both ejaculate and urinate out of the same tube, right? Like, oh, fuck, I never thought about it that way, right? So um, we have the same capacity for orgasmic pleasure. And there are there are three kinds of orgasms in that set of 20. And by the way, number 20 is called wild card because I'm still finding ways to come that I didn't know about. So just, you know, keep, keep, stay with me. Right. I'll let you know when I find the 21st. So there's three types of orgasms. There's locations to touch, you know, like dick, clit, nipples, whatever. And then there's orgasm techniques like erotic hypnosis, uh, I could just touch you and make you come. I can make you come over the phone, you know, things like that. Um, expanded orgasm practice, female ejaculation, they're technique driven. And then there's objects of desire, whether you're into latex fetish wear and that gets you off or you like electro stim or you like a certain magic wand or a sex toy that's really a pleasurable piece of things for you. They, they make you come in different ways. So in the sex life bucket list, I list all 20 of them. And then I list all of the different kinds of sex toys that are the classic categories of sex toys, because that's another piece of this, which is I have this, this construct that I call orgasmic cross training, where I, I have used these five different types of sex toys as a female body part person or these five as a male bodied person to teach yourself different ways to come from different types of stimulation so that when you're with a partner, you can have incredible orgasms with or without toys because you've really taught and activated all your tissue to get really swollen, really engorged and really, really orgasmic. So I, I encourage people to, um, and all the links for them all are in there too, which is nice. You know, people are like, where do I get this thing? Mm -hmm. I'm like, last page, there's a link for everything. Yeah. Um, sex life bucket list. And, um, I, I, I honestly, I'd like to leave you. I know we have to go now. Um, I'd like to leave you with a super hot sex date. I recently had that um might be something that other people would enjoy of course we'd love it are you open for that we'd love are you kidding me come on <laughs> of course i also i have to say too though i do want to maybe you should beg me before we <laughs> before we <laughs> before we go though i do want to get yeah, one, yeah. one other thing in there too all right let's um, do it you have an OnlyFans, right? Because I think this is fucking amazing. Um, yeah. and I just want to get a quick little button on the OnlyFans because I, I think around the show, I hear so many people asking me, I want to start it, but I'm scared. And, and here you are. You started it. You're a, mm -hmm. an expert in sex. You've been doing this a long time. Yeah. Why did you start it? When did you start it? What's it like? Mm -hmm. Right? How could it, like, yeah. What's your advice for people that are scared to start theirs? Yeah. Well, um, I love OnlyFans. It's a fantastic platform for people who are sexually self-expressed. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that such a mature and professional way to say yeah, that? It really was. Yeah, it really was. <laughs> That's yeah. what I thought too. <laughs> I have to remember that one. <laughs> 
<laughs> but um, but it really is true. I mean, most of the most of the creators on there are women who are masturbating, doing jerk off instructions, showing showcasing porn, fucking in front of the camera, you know, doing sexting, which they all hire out. They're not doing it themselves. Mm-hmm. They just they just have a they have people doing that for them, you know. So it, it's quite interesting. The OnlyFans creators. I'm a little bit of a little bit of an anomaly, but not really because what I do is I. I do a combination of things. Number one, I do photo shoots that are super beautiful and sexy because at 61, I want, there are a lot of people who love beautiful older women who are in great shape and have a great physique and are super pretty and love to be sexy. And I like showing what a woman's body looks like at my age because a lot of times you're like, she's 61. And you're like, holy fuck, you can look that good at 61. That's amazing. Like, I'm going to look that good when I'm 81. I'm not going to look much different between now and the next 20 years. Women look beautiful their whole life, life long. And not all men want to fuck 25 year olds. (laughs) All men love to look at women of all ages, but they don't get enough women in their 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s to look at that are truly a treasure. And so I enjoy my beautiful photos and offering them up. But at the same time, I also like taking a picture of my pussy, labeling every part, and telling you how every single part of the pussy likes to be touched and licked and stroked. So that as a, as a lover, you're like, oh, Fuck, I never realized that the clit, the clit hood is really the inner labia and it all goes down to this other thing called a foreshadow that I completely missed and have never seen. And I've been muff diving my, you know, 50% of my life, you know, like <laughs> you know, so discovering the parts and learning about the parts and finding the parts and knowing that they all like different types of touch. That's a super fun thing. Or posting a picture of myself with one of my lovers where we were just about to do 69 and explaining how to do deep throat 69 and how we get into the rhythm and what we do and how we communicate and move together and why you'd want to do it. And what is it? How is it different than regular 69? What is deep throat 69? Like, how do you come from a cock in your throat. You know, those are the fun things I like to do that I certainly cannot be doing on Instagram. (laughs) So, and I needed a place because I do a lot of penis pump sculpting. I teach guys how to enlarge their penis, but not only that, I don't do dick ratings. What I do, I don't want any dick pictures in my Instagrams. Please do not send dick pics to my Instagram. Go to my OnlyFans. It's my name, Susan Bratton, OnlyFans.com slash Susan Bratton, you'll find me there. You can send me all the dick pics you want there. And I will be happy to tell you how to use the pump and all of the pieces of pumping systems to get the sculpted, beautiful man hammer you want to have and what is possible for you. Because guys have all different shaped dicks, little heads, big heads, little skinny bases, big bases, crinks in the middle, going to the left, going to the right. You know, like, (laughs) so I did it for that. And I've been really, really enjoying it. And, um, I just love it. The thing I just uploaded right now were, um, macro super close-ups of my vulva so that you can really see the textures and things. I mean, it's just incredible. So I'm kind of like a sex nerd only fans hot. I think I might be getting to be a gilf. I don't know. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I don't have grandchildren yet, but I think I might be in the gilf category. I don't, I don't, I, days, no, so I don't. Me in a milk. I mean, yeah, I don't think that's the fucking case. <laughs> no, that, whatever. Um, do you want, do you want to share your spicy date story before we and this yeah i gotta take off so i'll make it quick but one of the things you know we've been talking a lot about the sex life bucket list and one of the things that couples tell me i do a lot of primary research and um one of the things that couples tell me that they rate themselves really poorly at is incorporating sex toys into their sex life with their partner And I'm always trying to get people to buy more sex toys and use more sex toys for this orgasmic cross training and then bring them into the bedroom to have different dates than just grab a boob and stick it in. I'm trying to get you to do more fun, fucky, fucky things. (laughs) So just recently, I had this really fun date where 
I told my partner that I wanted to use this new vibrator called the Plex, P-L-E-X from Hot Octopus, which is a vibrating butt plug that is a really good prostate massager. And I, he's older, he's older than I, 65. And I wanted him, I want him to do more prostate massage because it's good for you as, especially as you get older to stimulate the prostate. And, um, so I eased it in and it has a little remote control, which is really fun. So I could slowly turn it up. And I was like kind of lying on his side perpendicular to him. And I was stroking his cock and he was playing with my boobs and because my boobs are so orgasmic, I mean, he can just make me come and come and come and come and come and come just literally playing with a couple of nipples. It's unbelievable. We were making out a little bit, but we were mostly just looking into each other's eyes. And I had the curve vibrator from Hot Octopus. It's uh, both of them use a treble and bass. They have two vibrators in them. So there's like a rumble and a buzz and you can turn them up and down. And it's a G-spot wand. So I was holding that and I was stroking my G-spot and making myself squirt while he was playing with my boobs and he had the vibrator in his ass and I was stroking his cock with my other hand and we were looking each other in the eyes while I was having my orgasms. And he was so turned on by that whole thing. And he said, the most incredible part of it was you looking me in the eyes and holding eye contact with me while you were coming. And I used to be super eye shy. I'm a very kinesthetic person sexually. And so a lot of times I'll close my eyes to go inside myself to deepen into my sensation. And he loved that eye contact. It was so hot for him. So there you go. Hot sex. We didn't fuck. It was hot sex, two vibrators, and, you know, just mutual master, self-masturbation and mutual masturbation. And 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 it was just inc- an incredible incredible afternoon we had together. So what I'm trying to do is really explain to people how to expand what you're doing so that it's you're just doing more fun stuff together. Susan Bratton, God damn. Uh, thank you so much for being on Sex Party. What a fucking awesome, what an honor, right? I said in the beginning, but what an honor to have you here. Let's tell them Obviously. where they can find you, where they could give you yeah. all of their money. <laughs> You're so cute, Dustin. <laughs> um, well, you can find me on OnlyFans with my name, Susan Bratton. Same with Instagram, Susan Bratton. You can go to sexlifebucketlist.com. You can go to sexualsoulmatepact.com. You can go to femaleliquidorgasm.com. Uh, and you can also search my Better Lover channel, which is hundreds of videos, like how to have a passionate lovemaking deck date, how to give a yoni massage, how to give a lingam massage, how to get more sexual energy, how to use a penis pump, like everything's on there. Oh, yeah. And the pumping guide for penis pumps, pumpingguide.com. We mentioned that. Mm -hmm. I don't think I think I got everything we mentioned. And um, those are all those are some of the some of the places. (laughs) Sure. Yeah. yeah. No, I (laughs) thanks for asking. I I, yeah, we'll make sure everything is linked uh, in the show notes in the YouTube notes, all that good shit. They know where to find it. We'll make sure they find it. How could we not? Um, I loved having you. I would love to have you back. We'll figure that out. Uh, Thank you so fucking much. You're you're so amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dustin. I would love to come back. You are a gem and a (laughs) dirty bird, which I love. Yeah, we get along really great. Yeah, we'll talk soon. (laughs) Yeah, we do. Right? Jesus. Uh, Everything is linked in the show notes, uh, in the description. If you're watching on YouTube, I know, I know you can run there and get all the stuff she was talking about. It's all there. Thank you to my guest, Susan Bratton. for being on the show, for for being a fucking a legend. Loved having you. She will be back. If you guys are appreciating guests like Susan, if you want more guests like Susan, if you're appreciating Sex Party and you're still happy with putting up with all my nonsense, there are a couple ways you can show that love, that appreciation, that desire for more. If you are listening on platforms like Apple and Spotify, you can subscribe to the show. It's the most important. You can leave a rating. You can leave a review. You could tell your mailman or male woman, male person. You could tell your trainer at the gym. You could tell the person at the bakery, hey, listen to Sex Party. If you're watching on YouTube, huh? If you're watching on YouTube, I love you. I see you. Thank you. 
If you're watching on YouTube and you'd like to show some love, you don't have to, right? You don't have to do any of these things. But if you want to, you can like the video, you can subscribe to the channel, you can leave a comment. Those are all big things. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. If you want to reach out to me, you can do that always on the DMs on Instagram, on the DMs, in the DMs on Instagram. And as always, I will see you back here next week. Thanks for listening. The party continues next week. Click subscribe and let's make this a regular thing. Follow the show on Instagram and Twitter at SexPartyFM. Follow Dustin at Dustin Ribka.